Praise the Lord, Chester. Well, we're good to be here today. We thank God for this opportunity that he's given us uh, to be here. We're going to go to uh, the book of Job, chapter 33, if you want to be turning there. Uh, we thank God for all your prayers and uh, for allowing us to be back. And, and I told uh, Terry it was January. I'm pretty sure it was uh, January, maybe real early February, the last time we were able to, to stand in the pulpit here. So we thank God for all of your prayers and all that the Lord has done for us. Uh, he'll be right there with you when you feel like you're by yourself. And as I uh, told uh, Brother Jack, we were talking. He said, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. How do you know that? Jesus. Unless you've been through the storm. Yes. How can you stand and say that he'll never leave you? Unless you've been through a tight spot. Right. Praise God. I can tell you he's never left me. Amen. Uh, in times that you know you don't know what tomorrow holds or even if you're going to have a tomorrow, uh, you can depend upon the Lord. He'll be right there with you. Uh, he'll go with you. He's sticking closer than a brother. Amen. I never really had an earthly brother. You know, I had a sister that was a, a, quite a bit younger than me. Never had an earthly brother, but I've had one. Praise God that he sticks as close to me as I need. Uh, he doesn't give me everything I want, but he does give me more than I need. So I'm thankful for that. I still have confidence in him. Amen. Uh, you may not want to stand. I'm going to apologize for the, the amount of reading, but the Lord told me to do this. I didn't. I like to say this. You know, I didn't get this off the Internet. I didn't call somebody and ask them what I was supposed to preach. I just sought God's face for this service, and this is what he told me. Uh, so I've got just a little thought. He gave me one word, and it seemed like when I began to study and seek his face, he brought me back to Job chapter 33. Now, uh, we know, and those Bible readers know, that in, in, in Job, he had three friends that came to him, and they tried to accuse him of maybe he had done wrong and all these things, and then Job gave his point. And now we're going to go to the point of Elihu. Uh, he's going to talk to Job just here a minute, and something that the Lord showed me. I want to challenge you. When I read this, see if you can find the Lord anywhere. Come on, uh, I, there's uh, not a book in this uh, in, in this Bible that I can't find the Lord somewhere. So as I'm reading this to you, and then I try to get through this uh, chapter of reading, see if you can find the Lord somewhere, and we'll stand and ask God to give us the help. And in chapter 33 of Job, we we'll apologize for the length of the reading. It says, Wherefore, Job, I pray thee. This is Elihu talking to Job. Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches and hearken to all my words. Behold, now I have opened my mouth. My tongue has spoken in my mouth. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. If thou canst answer me, set thy words in order before me, stand up. Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's steed. I also am formed out of the clay. He said, I'm just a man, Job, but I've got something to tell you. Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid, neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee. Surely thou hast spoken in my hearing, and I have heard the voice of the word saying, Job saying, I'm clean without transgression, I am innocent, neither is there iniquity in me. Job saying, why has this thing happened to me, God? I've done everything you've asked me to do. He said, behold, he findeth occasion against me, he counteth me for his enemy. He putteth my feet in the stocks, he marketh all my paths. You may have been like that before. He said, behold, in this thou art not just. I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Why doest thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth not. In a dream, in a vision, in the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, old men shall dream dreams, you've heard that, and slumberings upon the bed, when he opened the ears of men and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed, and the multitude of his bones with strong pain, praise God, so that in his life aboard bread, he don't even like it, breathe, eating anymore, and his soul deadly meat. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen, and his bones that they were not seen stick out. I'm going to stop a minute and have you. You'll get to a point in your life, and it seems like maybe I've got there, you won't even recognize your own body. I, up to a certain point, and I'm not going to preach here, but up to a certain point, I kind of knew what was going on in my body when I felt a certain thing, but there'll come a point where you don't even recognize that body anymore. It's doing things you don't even recognize what it's doing. Praise God. And we've got to depend upon the Lord that He'll be able to touch us and do His perfect will. Praise right. God. Praise the Lord. And it says, So that His life is born through bread and His soul dead into meat. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen. And His bones, He's seen this happening to Him daily that there were not seen sticking out. Yea, his soul draweth near to the grave, and his life to destroyers. He's seen himself dying. If there be a messenger with him, praise the Lord, an interpreter, one among the thousand, to show unto this man uprightness, then he is gracious. Is there a messenger in the house today? Praise God, with him an interpreter. 
And then he is gracious unto him and saith, Deliver him from going down to a pit. I have found a ransom. Praise the Lord. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him. And he shall see his faith with joy, and he will render unto man his righteousness. He looketh upon a man, and if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profit me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all things... Blow all these things worketh God oftentimes with man. Thank God I see hope right here to bring it back his soul from the pit to be enlightened with the live, with the light of the living. Mark well, O Job, hearken unto me. Hold thy peace, and I will speak. If thou hast anything to say, answer me. Speak, for I desire to justify thee. If not, hearken unto me. Hold thy peace, and I shall teach thee wisdom. You help me pray one more time that God be able to use me today. Father in heaven, as I bow before you, God, I thank you for giving us the words to be able to say here today. I thank you, God, for helping us to read thy precious word. I pray, God, if there's anybody here today that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, Lord, I pray that today would be the day of salvation. I pray, God, there's those that are here that may need a touch in body, Lord, and may need a touch in mind. I pray, God, that you stay in the hand of the enemy for just one more day, Father. Help us to see clearly, God, that you've gone away to prepare us a place. God, I pray you take this stammery tongue, God, this weak mind and this broken vessel, and use it for thy glory and the upbuilding of thy kingdom. Kingdom. God, we bow for one man, that name is Jesus Christ. For nobody else will we bow to. In that same precious name we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord began to deal with me just a little bit. Thank you for standing for the reading of God's Word. And I begin to think about maybe God give me the word of ransom. And I begin to think about that word ransom and how many times. And, and we read here, we look at Job's story. It looked like maybe there was going to be an end like he didn't want to have. He began to look and see his body. He began to look and see these things come upon him. And he wondered, where did this come from? He said, I've done all things, God, that you've asked me to do. And no doubt each and every one of us has been at a point in our life where we found like that something was coming upon us. Maybe it's upon your mind, friend. Or maybe it's upon your body. I don't know. But thank God I found a ransom. Job in here and he lay here. He said, I found a ransom for this thing. Thank God I found a ransom one day for the sin that was in my soul. I found a ransom, friend, that was able to steal, praise God, and take me away from the enemy. He had his hooks in me, God. And I think one day I was able to make heaven my home. But when I finally came to him, he said, I'll be your ransom, daughter. Bless God if you're in sin today, friend. You ain't got to stay that way. But one died on that cross so that you could go free. Amen. First of all, ain't you glad there was a ransom paid for you? The there was a price on your head. On, there was a price on my head and nobody else could pay it. Bless God when I found myself polluted in my own blood, just like you found yourself. If you're here today and saved by the grace of God, there had to be a ransom paid for you. Uh, hey, you couldn't pay your sin debt. Yeah, I couldn't yeah, pay my sin debt. Yeah. Bless God, I could have laid my body down and I'd have died, praise God, in vain. Nothing would have paid for my sin. But praise God, there was a Son of God yeah, that came know. and died for me. Hey, my ransom's been paid. Your ransom's been paid, friend. We ain't got to be in torment no more. The devil loved to wrap his arms around you and to pull you down to that pit. Uh, hey, we read this and said, Job... He looked upon himself and he seen himself getting weaker every day. Oh, hey, you ever seen yourself getting weaker every day? I'm not just talking about the flesh. I'm talking about the spiritual mind. Praise God. I felt myself at times getting weaker every day. I said, Lord, I'm a sinking here. I can see my bones that I didn't used to see. He said, I found the ransom. Praise God, there's a ransom paid for you. And you can go free today. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I could go free from that prison. I hope you don't mind me getting out here amongst you because I want to just a minute. Praise God, there was a ransom that paid my sin debt. I looked back at it and I seen that it was zero. All of it had been paid. Amen. Hey, there's only one can pay your sin debt. Hey, God told Moses, He said, when you bring the children of Israel out, He said, there has to be a ransom money for each one of them. You read it, I believe it's in Exodus 30. He said there had to be a ransom for each one of them. Each one of them has to pay a half a shekel. He said the rich one, he said the poor one. Let's God no more for one, no less for the other. It don't matter where you came from today. It'll take the same thing for you to get to heaven as it will for me. Praise the Lord. It ain't a half a shekel no more. It ain't a half a shekel no more. Thank God for the Ten Commandments we read about. When I look at that and our dear brother, he taught wonderfully this morning. I say, God, how can I keep these? How can I keep these? He said, if you've offended one, 
You've offended them all. Yeah. Hey, praise God, you've been guilty of every one of the Ten Commandments just like oh, I have. Brother. But you know what? I don't have to die in my sin, friend, because my debt's been paid already. Praise the Lord. Hey, I look for a ransom. I look for a way to get out of my sin, didn't you? I look for a way that I can have a clear conscience and a clear mind, and I found that way, praise God. That ransom was paid for me, and my name was on that list. Hey, praise the Lord. Hey, your ransom's been paid. We've heard some things about ransom. You know what they do when you ransom something? They kidnap it. It's like I steal him away. I take him and I ain't supposed to have him. Praise God, Satan may have your joy today, and it don't belong to him. It belongs to you. Come on. Praise the Lord. You ever been kidnapped by this world? Yeah. Hey, I ain't never been physically kidnapped, but my mind has. Yeah. My soul's been kidnapped by this world time and time again. Bless God, but I was able to get free of that. I was in sin's prison, oh, so dark and cold. Bless the Lord, all the long sheep wandering from the start and from an eternal fall. Praise the Lord. I wish I could sing sometimes. <laughs> My rest has been paid. Thank you, Lord. Hey, I ain't got to be in that no more. Are you kidnapped today? Hey, when they kidnap you, they don't really feed you like you need to be fed. Hey, Satan won't feed you. He'll feed you contempt. He'll feed you anger. He'll feed you depression. He'll feed you all these things that ain't no good for you. Bless God, but you can go free from that today. You say, how do you know? Because God sent me today to tell you your rest has been paid. Praise the Lord. Hey, what would it be like if somebody held my brother ransom? And I went and gave him the money, and he said, I believe I'll just sit here. Come on, I believe I'll just stay. Hey, you just sitting there. You don't have to sit there, friend. Oh, God's oh, already paid you a ransom. You can go free today and leave a different man than you came in the door. Oh, hey, I'd like to leave different, wouldn't you? Yes, I'd like to leave full of joy today. You come in here with joy on your heart. Did you come in here praising the Lord for His grace and His mercy? You can leave that way, friend, because your ransom's been paid. Amen. <laughs> Will you sit here till you die? Hey, will you sit here till you die? I don't want to sit here till I die. My rest has been paid. He said, get up, son, and go back home and tell him what God's done for you. Praise the Lord. I'm glad my rest has been paid. My rest has been paid. I thought about another one. If his ransom hadn't been paid, you'd still be in your sin. You'd been better off to be sleeping today. I read about Barabbas. Hey, he was guilty. You know what you was? You was guilty. You know what I was? Devil guilty. Praise God, nothing but a worm today. Barabbas was guilty of insurrection, stirring up trouble. You ever been guilty of that? I hope not. Hey, God, don't like that. You ever been guilty of stirring up trouble? I may have accidentally by letting my tongue get in the way. Praise God, guilty of something like that. You may say, I'm so guilty. Why would he pay for it? That's why he paid for you, friend. Because you was guilty and I was guilty. Hey, praise the Lord. Grace is what? Unmerited favor. You didn't deserve it, and I surely didn't. I know the old wretched worm that I am. I didn't deserve His grace. I didn't deserve His mercy. But He said, I'm going to pay that ransom for that one. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm glad He paid my ransom. I ain't got to carry around that old nonsense I used to carry around. I love the Lord today, don't you? I love what He's done for me. I love that He gave me joy in my soul, praise God, and in my spirit that I could tell somebody, you can go free. What gives you the authority to tell me I can go free? It ain't me. But it's in this word. Amen. Hey, why do you think they give us this word? Why do you think Elihu said, Hey, get up. I found a ransom for you. Uh, you was dying in your own sin. You was polluted and couldn't walk. And you sat there just like Job. Then Job sat there and looked at himself and said, What is all this? What's going on in my body? What's going on to me? He said, I, I don't know where this came from. He said, two days ago, everything was fine. But all of a sudden, this started happening. You may have been fine two days ago spiritually, but Satan comes in like a roaring lion. Evil has spread itself like a green bay tree, and it'll shade you out, friend. Come on, God. Praise the Lord. Good. <laughs> he said, you can go free. Hey, Barabbas. Hey, Barabbas. He heard him coming. I believe he heard him coming. I don't know what kind of spirit he had, but he knew he was getting ready to die. He knew he was getting ready to die. But when he got to the door, there's a change of plan. I like to tell you, Satan would love for you to die in your sins so that you could end up in hell forever. Hey, there's been a change of plans. Hey, there's been a change of plans today, friend. There's one that's come to that door and he wants to open that door that no man can open. He wants to shut that door that no man can shut. Praise God, it's all in Jesus Christ. He wants you to go free today. Come on. Hey, there's been a change of plans today. Satan would love for you to die. He loved you to be tormented. He loved you to have no joy in your soul. He loved you to go home and want to be away from everybody. He loved for you to be in just a corner, praise God, and not answer the phone when nobody calls. He wants you to separate yourself from the church. He wants you to separate yourself from God. But I'm telling you, that ain't God's plan today. He come to wrap His big arms around you and tell you He loves you. Thank you Lord. And 
your ransom has been paid. You don't have to be kidnapped by this world. You say, how does that happen? If you go out in the world, they love to kidnap you. You go to the grocery store, time you get home, your mind's kidnapped. <laughs> hey, that ain't got you thinking about something in the world, something that's going to destroy you, something that they love you to take home to your family to cause problems there. I'm telling you, you don't have to do that, friend. If you feel like you're kidnapped today, the Bible I read you, he said he put shackles on him, he bound him up. Satan may have you bound up today, friend, but you can go free. Right. You say, oh, anybody can preach this. Well, that's good, because I can't preach. But I can tell the Lord. There was a ransom and I accept it. I ain't got to be smart to know when my chains is off. Hey, I ain't got to be a smart man. Hey, all these wisdom of the world, it's foolishness to God. It's foolishness to God. But these chains can come off you today, friend. You say, I'm all right. Yeah, you're going to be all right, those who keep that pride in your life. But if you acknowledge that we need a redeemer, we need somebody to help us, he'll give you strength, friend. Hey, when I'm weak, then am I strong. When I'm weak, then am I strong? Is anybody here weak today? You ain't going to raise your hand. I know we are. We're in a world like we've never seen before. And if you get your eyes on it, you're going to be pulled down. You're going to be kidnapped for everything. But can I tell you to lift up your head? Your redemption draws now, friend. Your redemption is drawn high. Your ransom has been paid. Barabbas. Hey, Barabbas. Yeah. I know I'm going to die today. Oh, there's a change of plans. The one from Nazareth, he took your place. The one from Nazareth took your place, friend. You were guilty of death and hell, but he died for you. Praise the Lord. Praise his name. Hey, you know what? It's all in Jesus. If you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got salvation. He said, if you have not the Son, you have not the Father. And if you have the Father and have not the Son, you ain't got it. But it's all through and by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that came and bled and died for you on that old rugged cross. It wasn't a smooth cross. It didn't feel good to His body. It hurt Him to die for you. To die for me. <laughs> Your ransom's been paid. Your ransom has been paid. I thought about that woman caught in a very act of adultery. Oh, that breaks my heart. Caught in a very act of adultery. And that the scribes and the Pharisees, the ones who thought they were smarter than him, they said, hey, this woman was caught in a very act of adultery. Moses' law says stone her. What do you say? <laughs> Ain't you glad he came and ransomed that law? Hey, what the law could not do in that it was weak in the flesh, Christ died for you. You could not keep that law. Nobody could keep that law. It was weak in the flesh. Nobody, friend. But Jesus Christ came and laid His life down and made that middle wall partition, that atonement, that atonement with God so that you could go free today. <laughs> oh my. Today could be the day. I never preached that last week. Today could be your day that you can go free. You say, you don't know my life. I don't need to know your life. And you don't need to know mine. But I know we fight the same enemy. And if you say you ain't fighting the enemy, I talk to your brother, Gary. If you say you ain't fighting the enemy, I'd be a little worried and I'd come here and pray today. Because Satan desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. You're no different than Peter. I'm no different than Peter. Satan would love to sift you. He'd love to shake you up just a little bit. He'd love to put you in that fine pot and shake you up. He'd love to stir you. He'd love to knock the props out from you. Praise God, I know about every truck I had to maybe the last one. I used to have to keep a scotch in the back of it because there ain't no such thing as emergency brake. Always got to keep a scotch. If you leave a scotch, you better drive 50 miles back and get that scotch. That belongs to you. If it's a piece of wood or whatever, thank God I'm telling you, he'll scotch you today. Yeah. Satan would love to pull that scotch. Sometimes I park on the hill. I'll tell you this, and I don't know how the Lord brought it to me, but I had an old truck and had a scotch on it, no doubt, and maybe I forgot to put it on that day. Come back home and it wasn't there no more. I thought, oh Lord, somebody done repossessed it. Maybe I didn't pay the bill. I looked around the house, looked everywhere, got to looking. It was at the bottom of the hill done run through one of the old buildings. Long, I passed it, didn't see it. You may be parked on that hill today. You say, this is crazy. I'm talking to somebody. You're parked on that hill today, and maybe you ain't got that thing in park. Maybe it's getting ready to fall out of gear. You feel yourself moving back. Oh, hey, you, you feel yourself. It ain't no time to back up, church. Oh, it ain't, I don't care what you're going through. Praise God, everybody's going through something. It ain't no time to back up. It ain't no time to turn around. Amen. And praise God, He'll scotch you if you ask Him today. Amen. He'll give you a redemption like you've never had before. Amen. That ransom has been paid. If I'd have been there and seen that truck going, I'd I maybe tried to stop it, could have got killed. But I wasn't there when it happened. But you're there and you're inside that vehicle right now. I hadn't thought about this in many, many years. I don't know what it sounded like when it hit that building. Thank God it hit that building or it would have been out on a major highway. But you may be in that truck today. I don't know why I'm saying this, but God knows. You may be in that truck today and you can feel yourself backing up. You ain't got no brakes. Hey, you can't stop Satan. 
You can't stop Satan. But hey, there's one that's greater than me. There's one inside of me that's greater than one that's in this world. And it can be stopped today, friend, because God laid down His Son so you could go free. Amen. You could go free. You may be in that truck. And you feel that thing backing up. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? I remember my daughter told me one time I preached and she was there. And at the end of it, she said, Daddy, I didn't understand nothing you said. If you ain't understand nothing I said, I apologize. I'm talking to somebody else. But that truck began to back up. You can feel yourself in that. Spiritually speaking, you're trying. You're trying to give it gas. You're trying to move it forward, but it's still backing up. It's, you can't get it to start. You're, back, you're, trying, you're trying to read the Word. You're trying to pray. You're trying to seek God's face. And sometimes He feels so far off. Have you ever been there before? Oh, Praise God. There's sometimes I can't pray. I'm ashamed to tell you that. There's sometimes I can't pick up this book and find myself in love with it again. But thank God there's somebody that will contact me and tell me that they love me. Amen. You know who that is? That's the Lord Himself sending His Amen. disciples to lift you up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you in that truck backing up today? Hey, you may be in that truck because of your own due will. I've been guilty many times of something. Sometimes I'm in a bad spot because of bad decisions I made. Sometimes there's nothing you've done wrong. It's just that trial. It's just something you're going through. It's just something that God has intended for you. But He'll get glory out of it. He'll get glory out of your trial, friend. You know why? Because He already paid the ransom. The rent, hey, Satan would love. Satan would love to put a price that nobody could pay. And guess what? There's only one that could pay your ransom. Amen. Without the shedding of blood, there's no, no remission of sins. Amen. Without Christ dying on that cross, you still be in your sin. Amen. You could try to keep them commandments all you want to. You could keep yourself in a religious bubble all you want to, but you still die, die and go to hell. Amen. But thank God that Jesus came and died on the cross so that I could go free. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to Barabbas. How did Barabbas feel? I'd love to have some kind of knowledge about what he'd done after that. You know, you, some things you just like to know. I'd like to know how he reacted. How did he react? You've seen different people get saved. Some people pray, praise God, and they get saved and they run out the door and look like they're just on fire. Some people, you, get the, you see them pray and you say, well, they didn't get nothing. It ain't got nothing to do with it. It's all what comes in the heart of man. But I came and prayed, I'll tell you, because I like people to know this. I was so ignorant about the Lord, I got down for about two seconds and got up, and I was done. And the preacher there said, he sure didn't get it. It don't matter how you get it. Except you get it through the blood. That's the only way you're going to get it through. I don't know what Barabbas done when he found out he could go free. What did you do when you found out you could go free? Oh. Hey, put a smile on my face, friend, to know I didn't have to carry around that baggage no more. Thank you say Lord. everybody else remembers it. Well, let them remember it. I'm lighter in my mind because I don't have to think about it because Christ died for me so that I could be cast away. Amen. <laughs> what did Barabbas feel like to know? Hey, somebody paid his sin debt. He was a sinner. He had done sinful things. He had done things that was against the law of man. <laughs> but Christ said, Barabbas, I'll take his place. And the world said, give us Barabbas. Crucify this man. Crucify this just man. And put his blood on our children and our children's children. I, we want this man to die. Give us Barabbas. Give us the old wretched, the worst sinner you can think about. Thank God that's how I got here. The worst sinner you can think about. That's the one that Christ died for. And I could go free because of that. You say, I've done too much. I've done too much. Thank you, Lord. I've done too much. There's no way Christ can forgive me. I'll tell you something. If He can forgive me, I'll look you in the eye and look in your heart and tell you, praise God, He can still forgive you too. If he can, I know who man I am. You may know who you are. I think as far as I know, you're pretty good old people. Bless God, but you was once in sin. Praise God. But I'm telling you, if He can save me, He can save anybody. Amen. You think of the dirtiest, rottenest, stinking of sinner in the world, Christ can save them. Amen. All they got to do is believe them. What I tell you about in Exodus, he said, the rich one, the poor one, they all got to pay the same price. A half a shekel. And they take that money and put it into the service of the Lord. The same price was paid for you. It don't matter if you got millions in the bank, praise God, or you rode here on fumes, or you walked here. Christ died for you, and His payment was good enough for your sin. Amen. This world may try to remember it. That's all right. If they want to remember it, they need to get saved too. Everybody that proclaimed to be saved ain't got it. Praise God, I'll leave that alone. But everybody claims they got it, surely ain't got it. But the tree needs to have a little bit of fruit on it. I need to have a little bit more fruit on it so that this world can know I went free and they can too. How's the old wretched sinner going to know he can go free? I don't go to him and say, boy, you're a stinking rotten sinner. I say, you know what, me and you got a whole lot in common, brother. I used to do the same things you're doing. Amen. Hey, there's a way to do this, ain't it? There's a way to do this. God wants to reach everybody. It's not His will that any should perish. That one that you walk past, and boy, they got to stink about them. That one I walk past, and they got to stink about them, and I want to get away from them real quick. Lord put it on my heart a couple days ago. It must be because I've done it or something. When you walk past them in the store, and you go, Phew. 
Boy, they stink. You know what that is? That's sin. The same way you stunk to God. The same way I stunk to God. I'm telling you, I wasn't a sweet-smelling Savior to my king. There wasn't nothing sweet smelling about me. I smelled like sin when I was in sin. But I'd love to tell this world that you can go free because the ransom's been paid. The Bible tells me that he died for the unjust. That's me. Hey, are you ransomed? Are you kidnapped today? You say, well, I've been saved for a long time. Well, that don't make you... Uh, well, you don't have to be ransomed again. I'm not talking about for your sins necessarily. But this world will trap you. How many, how many Christians are in church today? Lord help us. How many Christians are in church today and they're so sad... They're so beat down, there's no joy. There's no joy in their heart. I've been there before. I, I can preach on this because I've been there before. There's no joy. They see no reason for moving to the next day. I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, because my Redeemer liveth, I can live also. He wants you to go free today from everything that's binding you down. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Whatever's binding you down, we're good at playing the part. Ain't we? We're good actors and actresses. And I'm not telling you you're supposed to go tell everybody your problems because that ain't very wise. But if there's something binding you today, God sent me to tell you your ransom's been paid. If you're fearful of death, if you're fearful of something else, ec- economic crash, or you're fearful of your children dying, or whatever these things are, we've all went through these things before. Maybe still going through them now. But I'll tell you, when this trial started to change, the trial I've been going through for the last six months, when that trial changed is when I was in my bathroom... And I raised my hands and I said, God, if it's your will for me to die, I'm ready to die. I'm not going to think about it no more. I'm not going to try to figure this thing out. I'm not going to try to study it out. Man's wisdom cannot figure out God's ways. But if you offer yourself to Him and say, God, however you fix it, it's all right with me. If you can say that today, you say, Preacher, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, I have tried Him. I've tasted and seen that the Lord, He is good. If you tell Him that His ways are above your ways and you do whatever it is He wants you to do, I'm telling you, he'll lighten your trial. It may not go away. I'm not telling you to go away. <laughs> but why worry about something you can't change? If there's something in your heart today you've been wrestling with, please don't be ashamed to come to this altar. For I believe the Bible says if you're ashamed of him, then he'll be ashamed of you with his Father which is in heaven. I'd hate to be ashamed of him knowing he's got all that power. He's shown me that you can go through. Your ransom's been paid. You don't have to sit there in that seat no more. I'm no better than you. I'll tell you, I'm the least of anybody here. Let's get this out of the way while we're doing this. I'm the least of anybody here. Not worthy to stand before nobody. Not even worthy to stand in front of the mirror and talk to myself. But I want to tell you today, if there's something binding you down and you've got fear upon you and you've got anguish upon you and you're worried about this and worried about that, how can you have the joy of the Lord in your soul? God wants to help you today and remind you, you may see yourself getting weaker, you may see yourself in sin's prison, but God sent His Son for that ransom that you could go free from that. He'd give you a sound mind. You want a sound mind today? Would anybody like to come pray? Praise God. Anybody like to come pray? It don't mean you're a sinner. That's, that's a big mistake people make. A lie out of the pits of hell. This altar ain't just for sinners. This altar is for people needing help. I'm telling you, there's times that I couldn't uh, get to a point where I could pray. I wanted to, but I just had the spirit of prayer. You may have somebody in your family that you'd love to see them pray, but they just don't have the spirit of prayer. You know what you can do? You can come to this altar and pray for them. You can come to this altar and ask God to help them. There's times that we get confounded with this world and we can't allow ourselves to pray because our mind won't be on the Lord. Our mind's on everything else. There's times you try it, you try to pray, you try to seek His face, and you just can't get a hold of nothing. But I'm telling you, if you know somebody like that, it'd be good for you to be that middle man. Job said, I wish there was a man that would write down the words that I'm speaking. I wish there was a dance man, a mediator, one could go from heaven and earth and speak to me. I'm telling you, you can be that mediator today at this altar. If you'd like to see your children get strength, if you'd like to see your still children get grace, if you'd like to see your family get some help, you can come to this altar today. I don't say this out of my words. I've, I've, I've asked the Lord about this, and He's given me this. If you want to come today, I'm not going to push you. I'm not going to make you. That's up to your own will. But I'd hate you to get in the car and be beat up by the devil. I'd hate you to get in the car and be beat up by the enemy saying, boy, <laughs> ah, I got you. You didn't go up there because you're afraid. I'm telling you, God doesn't give you the spirit of fear, and He doesn't give you the spirit to worry about what nobody else says. Would you like to see somebody saved? Would you like to see God send something to this church? 
that you love to have? How about coming around this altar and seeking his face and showing him how serious you are that he's seen what you need? Anybody like to come pray today? Anybody like to come pray? You ready about every close? You may say, well, preacher, I really don't want to go up there, but I sure do desire your prayers. I'll tell you, I'm a worm, but I will pray for, pray for you. I, I do desire your prayers. I wish that God would be able to help me with this trial. It's an unspoken trial that I, nobody knows about but me. There's an unspoken trial that nobody knows about. Before you speak of that, I want you to be reminded why my text was. Your ransom's been met. Satan put a price on your head, and Jesus himself went to where Satan played. He went to Satan's home field advantage. Satan had a home field advantage. He went to his home. Praise God, he beat him. He beat him at his own game. Satan couldn't hold him. Praise God, this death couldn't hold him. But he beat him. If you wrestle with something today that's bigger than you, I'm telling you, Satan's bigger than you. You can't whip him. He'll destroy you if you try to fight him by yourself. But if you come and ask God to give you help, if you come, praise the Lord, if you come and ask God to give you help, he'll be right here to help you, friend. He will not leave you. I promise you that. He will not leave you. He's sticking closer, as I said, than a brother. Would anybody like to come pray? I'm about to close up. Anybody else like to raise their hand as we finish up and pray? Anybody else like to raise their hand and say, Preacher, I wish you'd pray for me and my family. We really need help. Praise God. Amen, brother. We'll pray. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. Anybody else? God sees these hands. You're not lifting to me. Praise the Lord. You're not lifting your hands to me. I'm nothing but a worm, friend. But God sees these hands when you raise them up. He knows where you're at today. He like to praise the Lord. He'd love to see you wave back the answer that you're still believing in Him. I'd like to raise my hands today and tell Him I'm still believing that He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Anybody else before we pray like to raise their hands and say, God, I wish you'd see me down here. Hey, if you was on that island, <laughs> if you was on that island and the plane went over, would you just stand there and say, boy, I hope they see me down here? Or would you start waving your hands? Would you start waving your hands and say, Lord, we're right here, Lord. Would you come down and help us? We're believing in you, God. It's not that we don't believe in you. We just like to make a little bit of movement down here so you know we're still alive. We like to raise our hands and say, Lord, right over here. Anybody else as we begin to pray? As we praise the Lord. Anybody else? I'm about to wrap up and we're going to pray. Praise God. First, we're going to believe. Heavenly Father, we come to you today believing, first of all, that you're able to do all these things. If there's anybody that doesn't believe, then they just need to not listen to what we're getting ready to say. But we, the rest of us, we believe today. We believe, God, that you've seen our hands as they went up. Some one hand, some two hands. Praise God. Some of them wanted to raise their hands, but they just didn't. But I'm glad you see the intents of the man's heart. I pray today, God, that you strengthen this church. I pray that you strengthen this body. I pray, Father, that you touch every soul that's in this church today. I hope that and pray that everybody's saved by the grace of God. But I pray, God, those that raise their hand, that you give them a double portion that I love. And that grace, God, give them grace to make it home. Give them peace to make it home, Lord. I pray, Father, that you stay the hand of the enemy in their life. I pray, God, you'd give them a good week this week, Father. I pray they'd be able to look upon thee as the author and the finisher of their faith. Give us faith, God, that we'd be able to overcome that wicked one, that one that would love to steal.